Hello everyone, my name is Les Kapuscinski and on behalf of the International Polka Association I've been asked to conduct an interview with three very very interesting gentlemen. All of them are Hall of Famers of the International Polka Association and all have had illustrious careers in the polka business. Uh, first of all we have, in no particular order, Edward Gutza. Eddie Gutza and his Polish Canadians have been entertaining people for over 52 years. Uh, his band, including the Polish Canadians and major music, uh, the Canadian fiddlesticks for many years, as well as uh, touring uh, North America and uh, parts of Europe with Ludova Nuta in recent years. Eddie's done it all. He's a recording engineer, he's a great songwriter, um, a great musician, has had hit after hit in the polka business, a great guy, Eddie Gutza. Next we have John Gura. John Gura this year in particular has had uh, unprecedented success with his newest CD, My Polish Roots and Beyond, winning multiple awards from the International Polka Association as well as other organizations in polka music. But uh, John has been entertaining people for many, many years. So many great albums, so many great uh, performances. John is a true entertainer. Uh, and just so much fun and and that shows through in this interview as well I think you'll enjoy it last but certainly not least Walter Osinek Walter Osinek is a jewel not just in Canada but all over the world uh, Walter has the Order of Canada which is the highest order one can receive as an entertainer in Canada he has a star on the Canadian Walk of Fame which again for someone in the polka business this is a great, great honor uh, for all of us who love polka music to have Walter uh, represented there. Uh, Walter has recorded, I think, over 92 recordings of his own and um, hundreds more with other people, including some very famous people. He's been on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson along with uh, Frankie Yankovic and, and others uh, on several other uh, big uh, TV shows. He's uh, toured the world. Uh, He's just really, really done it all, been everywhere, and still enjoys polka music to this day at uh, the ripe age of 85, I believe. So these are three really, really great entertainers and musicians. I know you're going to love the interview, so let's get at it. All right. Uh, hello, polka world. Hello, polka fans. My That's name is it. John Gura. Yes. Walter Osinek and Eddie Gutza. Eddie Gutza from Toronto. The one and only Walter <laughs> Ostenak. Here we are. What a privilege. You're at my you know, house. You my are house. the in one. In your town. In my town. You're also the oldest, so you're the best. <laughs> no, well, we I, are in... Put this here. I'm still here. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we are in St. Catharines, Ontario. Yes. The home of Walter Ostenak, and we are at his home. And as you can see by the mailbox, we are at his house. I guess you've never that No shot. questions about that. <laughs> there you go. So here we are with our esteemed guests, the trifecta of Polka power in Canada. <laughs> On your far left, John Gura. In the center, Walter Osinek and Ed Gutza on the right-hand side. So, gentlemen, the IPA and your fans have submitted some questions for me to ask you. And uh, we'll start the first one with Walter, and then the other two will answer also. Was there anyone in your family who was a musician or played an instrument? My mother loved music but didn't play anything. My father, he was a carpenter. But my uncles in Slovenia... They were, and even my grandfather was a button accordion player. Ed? My uncle was a musician, and a, the, they had a band here. He was part of a, one of the well-known uh, bands that played at weddings and dances. Uh, my mom played an instrument in Poland. She played a flute. Uh, my father had an old violin, and he really didn't play the violin but he could play tunes and I got a lot of the old tunes from he would just sit and play the violin in fact uh, we had little Wally over one time and uh, he pulled out the violin 
and he was sitting there with little Wally and it was about one o'clock in the morning. I said, I'm going to bed around four o'clock in the morning. They're still in the kitchen <laughs> singing and playing and Wally had his concertina. And uh, so that was later on. But basically my uncle is the one that inspired me for getting into music. John? I was surrounded by music in Poland growing up in Poland. My uncle had a band, uh, he played violin. My dad played the violin and mom sang in like a ladies village ladies circle so uh, lots of music a lot of folk music uh, around so when i when i came to canada in 74 you know, my somebody put on a recording a little wally look at the song he wrote and i said you're a friend little wally i said you know what he might have registered that the rights to that song but he didn't write that song because i knew all these folk songs i knew all these folk songs yes amen <laughs> okay, great. Now we're going to ask a second question. Uh, when did you start your band? How many band? points did we get for that one? <laughs> yeah, there's no points. No, no points, no prizes. What? Come on, Walter. <laughs> you start there's a prize at the end of this. So we'll start with Eddie. When okay, did you start your band? Going back a long, long, long time ago. Uh, in high school, because the high school I was in, Parkdale Collegiate, mostly Polish and Ukrainian students. Give us a there. year. year. A Come year, on. I'd say 50, 54, 55, okay. maybe 56, somewhere around there. When you try to go that far back, you're not quite sure when you started. But anyways, in high school, we got together with, in the music room, there was a Ukrainian fellow that played trumpet called Bill Kowalchuk, and there was a sax player there. Well, we're, we're going to, that, that's further down in the questions. There's another question, if you remember the original band member, so we'll leave that for another time. Okay. Okay. John? Well, me, again, the high school started the music program in high school, because I wasn't taking any other lessons before. So, 74 high school, and then 77, first little cha-cha band at the Legion Halls. Okay. Right. Walter? And I started my band January 26, 1957, <laughs> and I Mr. got married on February 22nd, a month later. Very nice. All right. Okay, so now the third question, who inspired you in polka music? John? Maybe the question should be what, why polka music got, uh, got inspired by polka music. I went to a wedding in 74, uh, and my sister-in-law says, you want to go to a wedding with us? You have to learn how to polka. And you know who played? Wally Babenek from Toronto. Yeah, I knew you, you knew Wally. Yeah. So I became to, uh, really, I love polka music right then, yeah. but the early inspiration from the recording. Of course, you listen to Wally. Eddie B. Eddie B. Yeah. Senior was the man, yeah. his voice, yeah. and, and, yeah. The, and the beat. That was my inspiration. Yeah. Walter? Well, my inspiration, no question. America's Polka King at that time, or whatever, he did earn it, mm -hmm. uh, was Frankie Yankovic. I wanted to be like him. I smiled like him. And the old saying is that if you follow a successful person, you might never be as successful. You'll always be a success, follow a failure, and you're guaranteed a failure. Okay. Good. Did you? Well, I guess my inspiration going back to my uncle and uh, the fact that he was in a good polka band and a lot of the bands in Canada as I was growing up we went to a lot a lot of weddings and all I did was stand by the band all night uh, my parents wouldn't worry about what happened to me because they knew I'd be by the band it was great bands as, such as Joya Draski, yep. uh, Mitzaleski, John Sava, uh, Norm Haikoski which was my uncle band that he was in and then we had a lot of records the Wojnarowski, Ray Henry, uh, Walter Solak and one of the ones that really really got to me was the Connecticut Twins mm -hmm. so all that and so when we started it was that type of polka music and then later on Little Wally, Blazonczyk, all those inspired me and there even was a lot of inspiration from Walter Ostnick because I used to love watching the Sunday night. It was Sunday night, right? Well, Saturdays and Sundays. Saturday, and, Sunday, Saturday. Saturday. Oh, yeah, Saturday and Sunday. watching there and having a different style of polka. You music. know what? Here's a little story. When I came to Canada, I, I was in a 
Polo's dance group and uh, we dance on Walter's show in Kitchener and it was being taped by I think CTV uh, yeah, yeah, affiliate. Yeah, yeah. And we danced for yeah. for your show. Well, I was there. on there. I was I was four years in Ki in Hamilton, and but I was uh, 24 years in Kitchener wow. off and on. 24 years, yeah. And actually, I'm still on TV right this minute with Brian Sklar and the Western Senators in Regina, Saskatchewan. We're on a cable access television. We're on three or four times a week. You Still. know, behind the camera is a well-known Canadian photographer, Les Kapuscinski. People know him from uh, Facebook and... Uh, okay. And we, uh, Les, are we rolling, by the way? We are. I got a question. Les told me a story. Okay. First time he met Walter Ostanek. Okay. Do you recall when you mm -hmm. met no. this no. Les Kapuscinski no, he, first time? No, no, he would never remember. Les, that. just tell him. When I was uh, a youngster, maybe 15, 16 years old, we had a, a band out of Sarnia called the Happy Canadians. Oh yeah, young. And, and there used to be a big festival in Inwood, I believe it was, a big Oktoberfest kind of a thing. They had multiple tents. They actually closed it down because it became too big. Was and that maybe uh, near Chatham? Yeah, yeah. near Chatham, yeah. yeah. A little, little town, but it yeah. just exploded. Uh, Thousands yeah. of people would come yeah. up. So yeah. you were playing one time and we had just finished up and we were, like I said, 15 or 16 years old. I and now I, I was playing guitar back yeah. then. and. And you came to me and you said, uh, my guitar player is sick. He's throwing up behind the stage. Do you think you could handle my stuff? And Maybe I said, sure. Maybe you have too much to drink. <laughs> you so you, Walter uh, asked, So, you so, so, so you, you had me play one set with you, and, and the only instructions I got was, you better smile. Just keep smiling. <laughs> that's, that's all right. <laughs> that was first that's, encounter. That's what I was told all the time. Frankie said, look, you got to smile. You got to look like you're happy, so, even if you're not. You gotta look like even uh, somebody told me, even if you don't worry, if you make a mistake, just smile. Yes, People <laughs> look at your face. So, okay, yeah, so the next tough. question here is, what was the name of your first recording? My first recording was called Gay Continental Dance Party. I have that album. Volume 1 and uh, Volume 2. There were some cha-chas there. But now they have changed it and took off the gay. So, so it's called Happy Continental. No, it's now. just called Continental Dance Party. John? Who, uh, uh, did, who released that? It was Back then, were you Arc, on the label? Arc Records. I was on Arc Records. And uh, believe it or not, I got a gold record on my first album because they used to put them in the stores, in the grocery stores, in, oh, okay. in, in drug stores, in, in service stations. They would have LPs. So it was like a label. Uh, yeah, and they, had, and they had stuff all over Canada. And they got salesmen to go around once a month and see what they sold. They'd pay for that and replace them and and that's how I wound up yeah. with Arc Records. So I did I think nine albums with Arc. We did uh, as far as our band in 1990, we, 1989 we did a 45 RPM. Yeah. We recorded at Squire in Buffalo. Yeah. And then in 1990 we did the first CD, Ready for Takeoff. Okay. In uh, Buffalo at Squire Studios that was for Sunshine Record label. Okay. John, Bur John Boransky and Mike Nowakowski. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Eddie Gutza. The first uh, LP that we did, and we were trying to find, uh, ma make a uh, title for it, it's, and we're thinking, we had all these titles that we want to do, nobody wanted to agree on one, and we finally had to put it out, so it was just called Ed Gutza and the Polish Canadians. No title or no nothing like that. We were all in Eddie Humanyuk's basement, we took a picture in front of his a fireplace over there, and uh, that was the cover. Uh, it was the. Was it on a label? Your own? Uh, uh, we yeah, we started all that. We started Ram Records at that time, and we recorded it at Arc also. Was it sponsored by? Do you remember who the engineer was? Oh, uh, way back. I can't remember his name. Ben but. Weatherby was there, I but uh, there was a guy before that, and he was a really a nice guy. And uh, you know, we did a, my first album in eight hours. But we were rehearsed, but there was no vocals, it was all instrumental. So the thing is, we went in there and bada boom, bada bang, and it was done. Today... <laughs> Ram Records was not sponsored by Dodge Chrysler? Yeah, yeah no, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we, we also did the first one, we, I think we did eight hours, because it was so expensive to record at that yeah. time, and we had a budget, and we said, we got to do it. So we had to be so rehearsed, and we went in there, 
and uh, uh, actually we did the vocals and I wanted to redo a vocal and it was nope. swell uh, we don't have we ran out of funds so it's got to be as <laughs> it is <laughs> all right um. okay so the next question is do you remember the original members of your band John oh boy well the first cha-cha band was uh, Mary Niewodomski on uh, accordion John Mazurek on drums Steve, uh, I don't know his last name, on guitar, and myself, and then Joe Popper came in on, also on guitar, and Rick Ivanchuk, John Biawe, George Machesovic, and then in 90, things changed, uh, new members. Should I list them all? No. Oh, no just <laughs> I the, mean, the question is, do you remember the original band? Original, music? original, yeah. yeah. Walter? Yes, uh, the original band was Bill Mortal on bass, Doug Grace on drums, Cecil, Pont Cecil Pontello on guitar and banjo, Andy Spinoza on saxophone, and myself on accordion. Very good. Did you? Uh, the original band was in high school, and we were called the Polka Aces at that time. It had uh, Bill Kowalczuk on trumpet. And he was also a great accordion player, and he made a career out of uh, Disney World. He played in Disney World for almost all his life. On sax, we had Ron Lutz, and then also a really good musician, Andy Stafuda. On he was a violin player, but he also played tenor sax. And on drums, this fellow called Pete Sklar. Nothing to do with the furniture shop, but anyways, <laughs> Pete Sklar. And oh, then Brian Sklar. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Walters. then after that, we, uh, uh, I got together with Eddie Gzeszek and Eddie Olesz and Eddie Homanyuk, and we formed the... Three Eddies. Yes, three Eddies. <laughs> we formed, uh, and one Joe, Joe Benell. <laughs> we formed the Polish Canadians, and that title was given to us by Little Wally. Very good. Great. So the next question is uh, What was your favorite area or place to play? Eddie? Every time we set up, and play polka music, it was our favorite place because we enjoyed every, every job we played. A few that stood out, well, a lot of the festivals, there was Bel Air Polka Days, the USPA Festival, the IPA Festival, uh, New London, uh, Big Pillars New London, and one of my favorite places that I played at was the first Polish festival in Poland in 1977. John? Well, the first, I guess, because that was my first festival I ever seen, was Erie Polka Days mm -hmm. at Waldermere Park. That was a uh, favorite. And then Seven Springs came along, and that became my all time yeah. favorite. Yeah. Walter? Well, the thing is, at the beginning, when I started January 26, 1957. What time was it at? <laughs> eight, eight, you are so good at these eight, freaking eight, dates. Eight, eight, <laughs> the thing is, okay. I started goodness. at the German village in Niagara Falls. <clears throat> I played there every second week. Then I came to the Heidelberg, and I wound up at the Heidelberg. And the thing is that in the old days, we used to pack them in. I mean, they were hanging off the rafters. Yes. And if you didn't get in there at 7 o'clock or 6.30, you wouldn't get in. You know, like, people were young. and I mean, it was like heaven every job was like heaven and that's where it all started and naturally then it, then it expanded i went to other places and then i started going over to the states and you know and i did dick pillars thing you know what i mean i did uh, pittsburgh i did youngstown i did cleveland ohio detroit michigan and, i mean it was all wonderful you know but the thing is that here i didn't have to go nowhere i had jobs and then naturally once I got the TV show, well, then I was getting jobs all over Ontario. And then it was one thing, you know, it was like, I was playing four nights a week and working every day. I was like a zombie, you know what I mean? Yeah. All you have to do is smile, doesn't matter. I did, tired. I did. Just show I the smile. I did, I had, to have, I had to have a guy driving, selling my LPs, selling my LPs, People sometimes wouldn't give me enough time to put them on the rack. They were buying them off me. 
you know, and then I had to get him a guy. He wore a shirt, same as us, dressed like us, and he drove my truck, okay, and sold my seed LPs. That's the way to do it. Yeah, so okay. that's, I mean, Eddie B had his bus, but I had a station wagon and a, no, at that time already, had I, had a tra I had a truck, truck, truck Very and a trailer. Very good. Very good. So the next question is, who in your band played with you the longest, John? I would say Johnny Vignage on drums, still as part of the band, part time. How many years approximately? 36 years. 36 years, wow. Yeah. Walter? Yeah, I would say my drummer, Doug Grace, who lives in Vancouver. He's still alive. He's 91 years old, and he was with me the longest. And, uh, Eddie? You know. What's with the drummer? <laughs> well, that, in this case, it's the same with me. Yeah, yeah. Joe Bunnell yeah. was drumming with me when we're the best of friends for over 50 years. Uh, Eddie Homanyuk took over for a couple of times when Joe got married and uh, went to Europe for a year. But uh, for 50 years on and off, Joe Bunnell on drums. Yes. Very good. Okay, so the following question is. Uh, what were some of your favorite tunes you played or recorded, Walter? Well, the thing is that Just Because still is one of my favorite. Just Because, Beer Barrel Polka, you always have to have play Beer Barrel Polka. Everybody knows that one. Blue Skirt Waltz is still one of my favorite waltzes, okay? And then Spanish Eyes and Release Me. And these are some of the tunes. Anytime I play Spanish Eyes and Release Me, people get on the dance floor immediately. Don't ask me why. But that's the Walter, name. at our age, we gotta start <laughs> going with a title, new title. Please regrease me. Okay. <laughs> Check my oil. You know. <laughs> uh, <Ed, you> <laughs> I gotta your, stop laughing your first. Favorite song. <laughs> Please regrease Remember, me. we're supposed to Can't smile. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm greased up here, so. Uh, but uh, I guess song. the favorite song that we had over many, many years is Hema Mushu Moya, and that was recorded, uh, and it's a privilege to have it recorded by other bands. Eddie Plazonchik re recorded it, and the News used it as their theme song for a while, and Quite a few other. Uh, the beat just did it. I the, think. The, uh, no, they did uh, the other one that I was going to mention. Oh, okay, right, right, right. Uh, Day of the wedding, Jen Vasella, which I wrote a week before we recorded it at Bel Air, and uh, a week before I got married, and it was actually I wrote it for my wife, uh, mm. Banja. So if you ever Try listen to, to the points. words, you can see that was. I uh, don't have a favorite song you really. Know. I mean, I uh, like Sony. You know, maybe you she's not crying anymore. <laughs> she married me, so she's not crying anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the other one, <laughs> the other no, one really. that I like that we did was a song called Toop Toop, mm -hmm. and uh, Maestro's Man just redid it there, and. Uh, those are. Some I, of the ones that I like good myself. I like playing the and rec well, we we recorded it. Many bands recorded the Gurals got Mountaineer yeah. uh, polka. Yeah. I love yeah. playing that because you could yeah. really put your feeling into it when you yeah. sing it. Yeah. yeah. Very very good. Okay, very good. So the next question is, uh, do you have any advice for young people starting out in polka music? As a matter of fact, I do. Oh. You're going to start off in polka music, go to the roots, take some old recordings and start off with bands like, I'll start off with Frankie Yankovic, then go to listen to bands like Frank Wojnarowski, uh, Connecticut Twins, Ray Henry, then go on to Little Wally and uh, Eddie Blazonczyk. Learn the music of those great bands and then make up your own style. Don't follow just one style. Learn all the styles that you can and listen to them, find out how they played and make something that's original from your own style. As far as I would say if you're starting in a polka band, which you're going to starve by the way, <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to make a living out. <laughs> It's a nice hobby. It's a nice hobby. Um, you know what? Play the music. Don't 
play the music like uh, from the roots, like Eddie said. Play the music that people want to hear. Don't. You might be a great writer and a lot of new stuff, but if you just push it right at the new stuff right away, I don't think it's gonna work. Uh, give them some stuff they grew up with and make it your own style. Put a little oomph of your own, and uh, that's my advice. Walter. Well, my advice is a young man. I've had this thrown at me many times. I said, young fella, it's not like it was when I started. I had grade eight education. I failed in grade nine. The thing is, you have to have an education. You have a number one, you go after education. You take lessons, learn how to play whatever we instrument. We recorded that song. I got my education. <laughs> not behind, behind the barn. barn. Not, but that's not <laughs> what no, I mean. <laughs> But the thing is, different education. you go after an education. And then, but still at the same time, you take lessons, what you love, and then you can fall, you can fall back on something. If you don't have an education, today you can't even get, go and pick up the garbage. I mean, you, ha you have to have some yeah. kind of, so I, my always is get yourself a good education and then go after your dream. Good advice. And good the advice. thing is, I didn't, I was lucky because that, uh, I, I worked at certain things and the people were behind me, so they helped me a little bit, you know what I mean? But I started working full time. Canadian Tire was my first job, $20 a week. $20 a week. Okay, I made more money when I started with Abby Anders. I was on radio three times a week. I got Monday on T CKTV, $5. Friday night, with the, we played the dance at the UAW Hall, I got paid ten fifty for the job, two dollars for the TV, uh, radio. Saturday, ten fifty, I got paid for the job, two dollars for radio. There you go. And that's <laughs> the way it was, you know. So the thing is that, uh, but little by little, little by little, you know, you get the shovel out and keep digging sooner <laughs> or later. <laughs> hit water. Sooner or later, Very and I did, you know. Good. Okay, the next question is, what is your wackiest or most memorable band story? Oh there must be goodness. lots, but oh my goodness. let's hear about at least uh, one or two. There's not too many we can tell on camera, but oh, here's, here, here's one. When we were going to Poland in 1977, we were flying and we had uh, about 98 people on the plane with us. and. Uh, it was a night trip. We, we left New York, I think, at around 11 o'clock at night and then slept a little bit. Got up somewhere over Germany or something like that. And Tony uh, Jankowski was with us. He's uh, the one who ran Erie Polka Days. And we had John Rahal, which is Tim's uh, Rahal's father, with us at that time. Uh, we had a violins on board. We didn't want to put him into the cargo. So we had a violins and Tony comes up hey, why don't you guys pull out the violins and play a couple of songs? Meanwhile, you know, we're um, 40 or 50 or 60,000 miles up in the air. So yeah, okay, let's do it. So we took and uh, started and then we're playing Hey Guri Moya Guri Dee 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 And about three or four women get up and they start dancing in the aisle and uh, Tony says, Stop, stop, we're gonna fall down out of the plane. And everybody's sort of, yeah, don't you know we're still, we're not on the ground. So that was sort of um, clean, yeah. <laughs> wild Sorry. time that we did have. John? Really, a uh, lot of funny stories uh, going down to play in Florida and the turnpike was, like 75 was just, uh, just packed, jam packed, everybody stand still. You gotta pee somewhere, you know. And uh, one of our guys, you know, started being out of the back of the van. A guy next behind us started doing the windshield washer. <laughs> but but no, another funny thing, going back to business, also down in Florida, another year, another uh, jam at the, on the highway. We start talking to the people and say, oh, we're poker band, poker band. I sold 11 CVs that time, you know, traffic jam. <laughs> Mind you, that happened to me in Brantford at, at uh, Tim Hortons, mm -hmm. they did a bus from Saskatchewan. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and I had them in the back of the car. See, there you go. Truck. No, there's a lot of funny stories, but um, 
Those are the clean ones. Walter. <laughs> <laughs> one of my funniest stories is I had a, 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 a drummer that recorded with me from Cleveland, Joan Pianecki from Cleveland, Ohio. He played with a lot of the big bands, and he was a real good drummer, but a little bit whacked, and he liked to drink. He says, Walter, if you're going to make this album work, he says, you've got to bring a gallon of wine, a case of beer, and a big, big bottle of whiskey so we can get happy. Now, we went from here to Toronto to record, and he came all the way from Cleveland to record with us, and a banjo player, Al Markic, who had his, also his own band and played with Johnny P. Kano. These are two of my dear friends. So, not going to be recording the, Cle the Canadian style. We've got to do it the Cleveland style. So, the guys start recording and start drinking. We got halfway through the album. Halfway through the album. And he's slushed. The guys were slushed. <laughs> I had a, they had to drive home and I had to bring them back again to finish the rest of the album. And from that day on, I said, it's never going to be the Cleveland style anymore. It's going to be the Canadian. Nobody's going to drink till we finish the job to me. and then we can have all, <laughs> all you guys want. You're going to have like one drink or so, but not like they were drinking. It cost me about $800,000, about $1,000 extra for recutting a couple songs because too much happiness. Yeah. <laughs> you guys were in strict too enough. Happy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I never let my guys drink. No, we don't drink anymore. Yeah. And not we any don't drink any less. The next uh, question is, what do you think set you apart in polka music? Well, I guess yeah, I could say I'm lucky that I do speak the language. If I sing in Polish, I do understand the language and I can kind of show, you know, if I'm talking about heart, serce, I can show more emotion about the song. So people who, 90, I would say 90% do not speak the language these days, the polka bands, uh, they will, you know, get the kind of uh, meaning of the song. That's Just me a pan mówi czysto po polsku, prawda? <laughs> da, da, da. Oh, oh, oh that's Russian. <laughs> si, well, senor. Well, if I can say something about John Gouda. Mm -hmm. And when I first met him, you were a dancer. Okay? <laughs> and I watch you, the way you operate. You're a good dancer. You're a good singer. Okay? The thing is that you already have something going for you because you know how to, you know how to move around. No, I was never a dancer, but Rude, yeah, no, no, but really, and you can speak Polish. I'm not a good singer, but Murray McFadgen did. You are a good singer. Murray McFadgen, Come on. No, but Murray McFadgen, in my my career, yeah. did like 90 albums. I did 104 albums. He did like well, maybe 85. But the thing is that I sang, but not on record. Okay, he did the he did the vocals, but when I sing. I can also speak Slovenian That's right. because at home I spoke Slovenian like the Cleveland guys. Lots of things that they sing in Slovenian, they sing them wrong because they don't know how to speak Slovenian. A ty rozumieš i pričaš po slovensku. That's it. Yeah. So, and not that they're not doing a fantastic job and the bands are great, but the thing is that I do know, I, in other words, that I spoke Slovenian at home all the time. Uh, going back to... Uh not to take away from Eddie, I was lucky enough when I was living in Poland, we were forced to take Russian because under the communist system, but I didn't like it. But now I'm so lucky I did because that gave me a bigger scope of the, all the Slavic languages. So I can read uh, and uh, Cyrillic and, you know, when it comes to any, you know, Slovenian or Russian, yeah, Ukrainian, yeah, yeah. Well, the it's thing much is, easier for me. Also, the thing is, I was born in Quebec. I spoke French when I was in Quebec, see? but I was only four years old when I moved to Ontario. So the thing is, I wish that I kept up the French, but again, nobody spoke French in those days in Ontario, so I didn't But continue. you still do the ooh la la, right? Well, the, yeah, <laughs> the, 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 I think that I could have been doing a lot of work in Quebec if I would have spoke French. A lot proper. of nice jigs, Quebec jigs, those uh, that French Canadian music is so mm. uh, like a polka. That's right. They love they love happy music. Eddie, Eddie, what set you apart? 
What was the question? What set you apart? <laughs> what do you think set you apart? Huh? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> well, I think we developed uh, a unique style because I started off with the Eastern bands, Wojnarowski, Ray Henry, Connecticut Twins, and the first uh, band that I had, and even when we started with the Polish Canadians, before we were the Polish Canadians, we only did that Eastern music very fast. And then when we uh, met with Little Wally, and that was, uh, we went on a trip to Chicago, when uh, that's Eddie Krzeszek, Joe Bennell, and myself. When we finished uh, uh, university, we went in, oh, we're gonna go to the big town if, uh, and see what the music's like in Chicago. And we walked into Little Wally's office and we said, well, we're a band from Toronto. And he says, well, what kind of music we play? And he says, oh, we play, you know, all types of music. He says, you guys want to do a job for me in uh, Grimsby, Ontario in October? And it was like, what did he just say? And so we got back and we had to completely revamp our style to a Little Wally style. So from Eastern to uh, Little Wally, and then when we started doing recording, we took a combination of both and made our own style out of that, which is a combination of both. and. That gave us a unique style, and then the thing is that Eddie Homanyuk on the first uh, album that we did on Ema Mushimoya, he says, I want to put a violin on it. And it was like, I was, Eddie, what are you talking about? You can't put violin on polka music, what's wrong with you? And he says, well, I want to try it, I want to do it. And uh, he was so, that he wanted to do it that, we let him do it, and yeah, then sure. after that, and, and but the way he did it, he did the country. That really was your accent when I first met you. You heard yeah. your band, that was, you know, with yeah. that little touch of violin there. Yep. That was that was your accent, so the, and that is what the, mark. we sort of trademark. grew up with a little yeah, trademark. Set you apart. Yeah. Very good. Okay, gentlemen, this is uh, all very interesting, but sooner or later this has to come to an end, and we have all kinds of questions. But finally, we'll ask you. What kept you going? What what kept you going in, in polka music over all these years? Why did you continue to uh, follow in these footsteps and to bring joy to all the people? What, what is it that drove you to continue? I always said, if it becomes a chore, pack it in. If it's still fun, keep going. As long as God gives me health, I want to keep going. Look, Walter, smiling Walter, <laughs> 85 years young, that's you know, what you, you said, know, right, Walter? As soon as you said smiling. <laughs> 85 years young, and you, yeah. you, know, you still love it, you still I got love, it. And, I love and, it. I don't you know, like people, it. I don't like it. People I give love you, it. People give you that. People, I, do, I find in front of you people dancing and singing along with you, they give you that oomph, they give you that uh, And even you know, right now, drug. just you guys being here, you make me happy. You know, that's what it is. It's not a... I don't look at it as a job. I don't look at it as a, you know, it's a hobby. It's, it's, it's hard a, to explain. Yeah. Yeah. When you love something, you love it. Yeah, it, it, it is a hobby. It's never been a full-time job. And the thing is, when you get on that stage and you see people, what you're doing to people, you see them smiling, dancing, having a great time. I mean, that's what life is all about. It's the poker fans. Yeah. It's, uh, it's the fans. That's what it is. And it's... The, the music is so good. Uh, no dirty lyrics, no kill the cops or stuff like that. Uh, no angry music like some music is. This is happy music. You can't, in fact, uh, uh, as you know, uh, I say polka music, Walter will smile, right? Polka music. <laughs> <laughs> There's a no generation gap in polka music. You can have a no, four-year-old right. dancing with a 90-year-old. And uh, I hope it continues uh, for you poker fans. Maybe, you know, the, we don't have the, the nest of so many new musicians like we had years back. Yeah. But th for those who are playing and maybe new musicians come along, I hope you continue to play the happy music. Because yeah. it is happy music. It is. It is. I mean, it, it makes you happy. I mean, you know, things are getting smaller, festivals yeah. and dances yeah. because a lot of the generations, maybe there are skipped a generation and we lost a bunch of followers. But when people come to a polka dance, they say, oh, this is fun. They will well, come again. You see my man cave that I'm cleaning up right now at home. 
here. I have an accordion in there. I'm going to have it with automatic drummer and everything. But all those pictures in there, they all have a story. Oh, I yeah. have hundreds of pictures, and they all have a story. Now, that guy that's working for me right now, he, he's a Ridley College graduate, mm -hmm. believe it or not, in between jobs right now, and he's helping me out. But he wants to write my... You my should. Life. I, and and you, I tell him, like, who's going to buy it? Who's going to buy it? But he says, look, we're going to do it in the winter time when things are slowing down. What we're doing today, this is going on YouTube. Yeah. This will be in the archi archives well, of your, IPA. Your, your YouTube? And on <laughs> YouTube, right now, the IPA has started their own channel, YouTube channel. Okay. So anybody in the world can view it. So they are having interviews all over USA from all styles of polka music. Well, and the thing, we will preserve uh, many memories and facts. One thing I have to say about IPA, I am honored to be in IPA, and it also arranged for me to be the first guy inducted in the Cleveland Style Polka Hall of Fame because the five that were already in the IPA, they were the ones that went into the Cleveland style automatically. There you go. Yeah. Well, so, so I lucked out right off the bat. Gentlemen, it was a pleasure seeing you all today. You thank you very much on behalf of IPA. <laughs> and I'll say a big thank you to the guy behind the camera, Les Kapuscinski. Absolutely. You know, and he's one, the one that yeah. takes most of the pictures you see on Facebook, on, on social media. Okay, well, I'm and, not on that. But <laughs> no, I just want to say one thing about you, uh, John. I never heard anybody say a bad word about you except the bad words I said about you myself. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, this is the first time in history that the three IPA Hall yeah. of Fame yeah. were together. Yeah. And you know what? I think uh, it would be a good idea if we ended off here uh, with uh, a little bit of vocal. Everybody knows Roll Out the Barrel. Roll out the barrel. Let me, hold on. Let me, I, 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 keep we going. Got a barrel of fun. <laughs> Roll out the barrel. I got it. I got it. <laughs> we got the blues on the run. run, run hey, run. hey, hey. Sing boom terra. Sing out the song of the cheer. Now it's time to roll the barrel. Cause the gang's all here. Bye. 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 There you go. There you Got go. my barrel. Hey. Bye. Let's go and eat. And with that, as Walter said, let's eat. We did. Walter had uh, treated us out for a very nice lunch and we had lots of fun talking even after the interview was over. I would like to thank Walter Osnick for his hospitality and op opening up his home to us and uh, to all three of the guests for giving up their time so that we could kind of look into their lives a little bit. Um, and uh, I hope all of you have enjoyed the interview. I certainly enjoyed it. I learned a lot. I hope you did too. Until next time, see you around.